Hey guys, uh, just making a random video. Um, figured I'd share some thoughts and a couple updates on the event. One update is that they've actually made these fleets a lot harder than they used to be. Um, <laughs> well, I won't say a lot harder. You really can't make a static target that just does damage harder, but they do about 25% more damage now today than they did last night. Uh, probably more actually, almost twice as much damage come to think of it because I, using the manual strategy that I was using last night, I went from taking 11 or 12% damage to taking 20% damage per hit. I did do two hits, I got down to 20% uh, fleet health, and right now I am, uh, after my third hit, I'm just below that. So and you can see, you know, I lost, that's after three hits. Um, personally, I think getting one and a half million points uh, every 319 coins is, <laughs> I'm not going to share my thoughts of that, honestly, uh, because that's why we're in this predicament. That's why, uh, if you look on the forums, literally there's an update to the original posting. Um, I'm kind of locked into steam right now. If I go out, it'll exit the video, but go on to the forums, look at kicks eye Vega conflict forums, uh, and general discussion under the decimation posting there's an update that literally says in response to community feedback we have decided to add uh regular hives make the harvesters are apparently the co-op harvesters are apparently a little easier now and they made the reaper or the the reaper harvesters and barrage harvesters more difficult in response to community feedback so my general rule of thumb when I'm posting feedback on the forums about an event, because of things like this, have come down to I do not praise Kixai on the forums anymore. Uh, I will for certain things, but when it comes to an event, I do not praise Kixai and tell them that an event fleet is easy because Kixai will make that event fleet more difficult. So I'm not going to give them that feedback of, hey, you can make this fleet harder and I'll still hit it. Right, because we're still gonna hit it regardless. But if the fleet's too hard, it needs to be dropped down in level. Honestly, I tried hitting a level 90 with Komodos uh, just for you know the fun of it. Uh, Mark V Komodos with all Zenth 4 and uh, the three Zenth 4, and I think I had uh, Nova. I had 300 DPS on each one of them, uh, which for Komodos is pretty good. Um, and I only did, I think, 20% uh, damage and I was dead. I lost two or maybe even three of my Komodos before I even got on top of the Barrage Harvester. And that was before they updated it. Now, think back to a year ago, Komodos were one of the top end ships in the game. Um, and even then, they still were on par with... The only reason Punishers were, were ever better, or not Punishers, but Pythons were ever better, was because they have the unstable reactors. It's the only thing that Pythons have over any other cutter in the game uh and skirmish armor but the komodos had the speed obviously because if you have unstable reactors fitted you're slower than a komodo and they have versatility they have four gun slots they have two special slots they have three armor slots on mark five they're good cutters they're not bad right uh and still a lot of people out there would love to have komodos uh especially six mark five komodos my six mark five komodos barely put a dent into one of those harvesters so it's just unfortunate that you need this fleet and you have to be willing to accept that this fleet is going to take a lot of damage. The higher marks it is, the better you're going to do, but it's still kind of crazy to me that Kixai went and took, and I, I don't even have a top end marked. This is honestly, I did all this without coin. I did not coin a single one of these mark upgrades and I didn't buy a single coin deal. Um, and I could have more of them marked up, right? But I didn't coin this at all, and I was able to kill three of them before I got to the point where I'm wiped out, or at least too far gone to compete. There's a little sliver of health. I have five left, um, but this one would die as soon as anything touched it. So it's just crazy to me that that's what we're at right now in this game. Um, but hopefully with enough balancing kick so i can figure that out figure out apparently there's new gating rules coming that's also something that i wanted to talk uh kind of mention gating cm scar uh not scarlet um 
Chris, the, our new community manager, I think it's customer service, Chris, whatever. Uh, he has stated in the forums, I've seen the post, I can't remember where it was exactly, but he did state, so be ready for this. Uh, I would not necessarily start lowering, you know, changing fits around like crazy because he did state in the forums that gating is being looked at and it looks as though base gating and fleet gating is going to raise again. So they basically, uh, you know, compiled a bunch of data. I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that they couldn't necessarily guess what everyone's fleet levels were going to be until they actually, bam, enacted it, saw what the average median of fleet levels were after the update versus before the update, something crazy like that, and went ahead and decided, okay, we're going to have, you know, gating at level 60 again or 65 or maybe change gating in general so that, you know, it's five levels plus or minus all the way up or maybe you get so high and it's 10 levels plus or minus, who knows. Um, but still, I think that uh, everyone should be aware that gating is going to change. Yes, you know, you guys saw my video yesterday. I talked about, you know, all my flea levels changed. I'm sure all your guys did too. Don't panic. It's changing. It is coming. That being said, there may still be some changes that you may want to make just based solely on the fact that some weapons are now a little more enticing than others um, because we have a little more room to play again with gating. So. Um, I know a lot of us have probably been bouncing our fits around. Um, for example, this fleet right here, I've bounced, and I'm missing one because I'm refitting it, but I've bounced this fitting uh, and this fitting around like crazy over the last couple months, um, and it's really getting on my nerves uh, just because every it seems like every 30 days I'm having to go and spend freaking you know a week just refitting this fleet. And then a week later, I'm refitting this fleet. Thank God I don't care if I have Annihilators or I just coined them all, right? Because I did coin, I, I didn't coin three of them, but I made three of them and I partially coined uh, a couple of them. So, you know, thank God I don't want any more because I haven't enough time to refit everything I need to refit. And now, you know, everyone has all these. What I'd really like to see is for Kickside to come up with something new and interesting uh, to do with our non, whoops, our, our non- uh, fitted ships because if you're like me you know I'm sitting here I go through I used to use these on aliens a long time ago uh, but I have five zeals that I don't do anything with I have oh, let's see six lances that I don't do anything with a couple of them are marked I even have mark upgrades I think I have a couple mark fours credits waiting around uh, you know there's just a lot of ships that I don't use that I know a lot of people have this issue like these. Who's going to use machetes when we just all got damn please? Like, I, I want to see something that we could use those on. Um, and then there's ships that, as soon as we got them, you know, Kickside gave us, I have a bunch of, you know, all these covenants that they gave us during the first decimation that by the time I refitted them uh, to manifolds so that I could use them on harvesters, we had punishers. And punishers, obviously, everybody knows, are vastly superior against harvesters. Honestly, I haven't tried these manifold covenants against the harvester lately they probably wouldn't even work uh flat out they'd probably die not long after they got on top of the target especially shortly after that first nuke went off that they like to drop um and now they're giving they're giving us the rest of the demon core stuff you know like i have all these basilisks that i don't know what to do with and i could make them all mark six but or mark five but why would i make them mark five i have no idea why um so i would like to see something that I don't, I don't know, maybe, you know, trade some in for instant credits. I, I don't even know what I, what we can do with them. Maybe trade them to players who can use them. Uh, we've been asking for that for a long time. I doubt that we'd ever get at that kind of market where we could just trade ships to and from people. Um, just because there's a lot of ships that I would just immediately give to a brand new player that I just don't use anymore, but I still have laying around. Uh, but yeah, just know that you're... Gating isn't going to stay the way that it is right now for an extended period of time. Uh, for a while, we had the same gating for, gosh, the first year and a half of me playing this game. Gating didn't move at all. Uh, Fleet Bay 11 came out. Gating was still at level, I think it was 35 back then. Um, and then they changed it, and they went up to 40. Yeah, I think it was 40. And then after 40, it went up, you know, to... What was it 60 uh, and then it went back down and it's all over the place hopefully they figure out exactly what they want to do with it I do like what they've done with the bases they more 
they more they match and kind of mirror the top levels of fleets uh, a little closer to what they used to. Um, you know, we used to have level 45 bases were like the top dogs. Uh, you just see people with level 48 bases, but that's because they just screwed their base to fit all, you know, specific modules to everything so that they could get to that experience level, and then they'd refit everything back to something that actually worked. Um, which, so now we don't have to do things like that, because, you know, literally, I feel like it was just yesterday that my base was level 49. I hope you caught that joke. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. It's going to be, it, it'll be interesting. And I mean, we have dudes that are level 71 uh, and higher. I've seen 73, I think I saw. So and I'm sure there's higher than that too, honestly. Um, but yeah. Uh, what else? So if you go to the market, you'll see these. Um, so this is a new tab that was added in the market that, though I don't think I have the update. Do I have the client update for Steam? Did it update on its own while I wasn't paying attention? Let's check and find out. Yes, it did. Okay, so if you're not sure if you have the new client, um, that's what I just did. You know, I went to look. Oh, hey, I do have three armor modules. I, I think iPhone is probably the only, Apple is the only one that hasn't released a new update, uh, and they might by the time this video publishes. Um, but yeah, so if you go to the new updated market, uh, you'll notice that for those of you who missed out on events, um, or want some much needed tech, uh, you can get Punisher Cruisers uh, by the bulk. Um, you can go in here, you can buy six. Uh, it'll only cost you to get all six at a, a low price of 11,000 coins. So, uh, is that 11,000? Is that really? Holy crap, that's, that's actually really good compared to building them. If you were to coin a Punisher, you're looking at probably 2,700 blank after you get Alliance help. So uh, it kind of surprised me to see 11,000 up there. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and mark it, um, that will cost you 14,000 for all of them to be Mark 5. And then if you want to take them to Mark 6, so mind you, we're at 26,000 coins is 206, well, say about $200, uh, probably 210, 220 dollars after you get all the bonuses. Now to get all of them to Mark, six to punish your elites um you'll get another three thousand so we're creeping up on thirty thousand coins right there uh and if you don't have any xeno disintegrators um you can go ahead and get yourself some of these bad boys uh it's it's a coiners game we all know that i'm not gonna sit here and say don't coin uh because regardless of what we say people are gonna coin anyways I think this is a clever move by Kixai. I don't think it's going to take on very well. Um, I'm sure some people will buy it. I know if I didn't have a Dominion carrier and I had no blueprint for it, five grand or five five k coins, fifty bucks isn't a bad deal for a Dominion because uh, I'm pretty sure I maybe coined my Dominion back when I first got it, and it probably cost me about forty nine ninety nine. Um, but the one thing that I didn't have back then was this for another $49.99. You get a $100 pack, you get all the stuff to market, you get the Dominion Carrier itself, and you still got 2.5K coins left over. So it's a win for kicks because they make money because this is about to be out, out of date. You know, this carrier may be useless come next month. Um, which is going to be kind of interesting. I haven't looked into what the, you know, what the speculations on the new carrier is going to be. Um, support field wise but i have a very very strong feeling that it's probably going to be a jamming field uh it's i don't think it's going to take up the whole map i definitely think it's going to be a larger area than the dominion and the ragnarok have for their agility field my guess would be twenty thousand between 15 and twenty thousand on range uh you won't be able to see your own firing arcs um I think it's going to block out everything that you can see inside of that range, regardless of whether it's carrier or a, um, you know, uh, I think it's going to be just like fighting a hive. Um, I really do kind of think that way, because if you look at what we have, we have three ships now that have the agility field. We have two ships that have the ion field. We have one that has a phase, a built-in phase, which that didn't go so well for kicks. The phase didn't go so well. The Valhalla and the Freyr with the Ion Special actually isn't that bad. Um, it has applications, 
but it's never going to be, let me see if I can find the holes, okay. So, uh, and then we'll organize, let's go ahead and take out, sort by type, bam. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Sort by level, rarity, current pieces, whatever. So, yeah, so you have your, your Freya and your Valhalla. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages to using both of these, right? I like using the Freya personally uh, for low-level Fleet versus Fleet because you get a lot of help. Um, it really isn't that high of a level compared to uh, the, the Valhalla, and you can fit swarms to it. So I'm not going to go into how I do that and what I use on mine, but it's probably something like that. Um, and it's probably around level 40. It's definitely still below 45. Uh, but it's it's a cool ship for what it does. And it gives you this ion field, which I think it has been stated that it was a 20% bonus to shield damage somewhere in there. Uh, so... So the Valkyrie, when this bad boy came out, um, and this is just kind of going into the different you know specials that we have on the phase or on the on the carriers themselves. Sorry, uh, when the Valkyrie came out, we really wanted a stasis field. Everybody was looking forward to getting a stasis field, and Kicks Eye, even right up until I think it was the day before the event that the Valkyrie was released, nobody knew what the, whether or not it was going to be. We just all kind of assumed because it's a Valkyrie, and that's what all the Valkyries uh, the Vega used had at the time. And then it ended up being this phase shift field, um, which really disappointed a lot of us because it doesn't have that much of a use. Because around the same time that they released the Valkyrie carrier, they also nerfed the shields uh, in general. So they made it, you know, they brought the crafting system around before the Valkyrie was even released. Uh, so we already had Mark IV tridents at least. I'm pretty sure we had Mark V lances were coming around in scythes. So we already had to, and back then, they got like a, it was something crazy, like a huge, huge bonus to, to phase, which that made it a little bit useful because that every extra bonus over that. I remember killing entire fleets of Revelation cruisers with Echo Tridents. I had Echo Tridents during a Civil War that had Meta 2, Optics 5, and Echo 3 by like four or three by three, whatever they can fit. Uh, yeah, I think it was three by three. And I finished an entire Civil War. I think I placed like 80th, and I never used anything other than tridents, uh, echo tridents at that. And I think they were like three hours repair. Um, and that was like right after, you know, crafting was really getting hot and heavy. Um, it was right after, I think, uh, the these you know, supply run fleets came out somewhere in there. Anyways, so then they went and they nerfed the amount of phase that destroyers naturally had. Um, so that kind of made a lot of that phase go away. It made destroyers not as useful because before that you could just kill everything through the shields. It was like 80% at Mark V or something like that, like 60 or 70% at Mark IV. Uh, it, was, it was a lot. Um, and then they took it away from us, and I was, for one, disappointed. Now it's like, what is it, 50% maybe? I don't even remember. Because um, I don't use Fleet vs. Fleet Destroyers. Obviously, the Infernal Wave Driver Mark V Damocles is pretty powerful at lower levels. Um, but yeah. Uh, what's the... So then we have that, and then we have the Agility Field. Um, again... The Ragnarok is still useful. It's the, one of the most useful carriers in the game. It's always been that way. It was the second carrier that we had released, and it was... I mean, they created the Midgard in response to people not being able to get the Ragnarok, but they didn't want to release it again right away. And now, pretty much everyone has it. I have I have them on my alt. I have the Midgards on both accounts. Um, they have a usefulness at keeping your high-end fleets below level 60. Uh, or 55, whatever the new gate's going to be and whatever the current gate is, Ragnaroks, that's what they're there for, in my opinion, uh, to keep your fleet lower level. Um, that being said, I'm going to say this now, and I'm only going to say it once. Your carrier is only as good as the fleet supporting it and the person who is piloting. So keep that in mind. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of wanted to see... I was glad that we had the agility field with the Dominion. Um... 
But if I had to speculate what I thought the next carrier's support field is going to be, I would say hands down it's either going to be a stasis field or a jamming field. And I think the most likely one is going to be the jamming field. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd like to see that. But I really do think that it's going to be between 15K and 20K range. And I think it's going to be a jamming field. I don't know what it's going to be called. Uh, I'm not that guy who speculates on names because obviously with carriers, they just, they're all over the map. Uh, but yeah. And I think it's going to have some pretty epic stats for a carrier. Um, something to keep in mind too is that these Annihilator battleships, battleships are kind of useless without a good carrier. All right. Uh, specifically an agility support field. Um, without the agility support field, battleships are slow, they're easy to catch, even with net, regardless. Uh, they get caught, they get destroyed, right? So you take an Annihilator and you make it Mark 6, right? So on Mark 6, the Annihilator gets, sometimes I gotta remember where I'm going with some of this stuff. Actually, it's gonna be this over here. So a marked up Mark 6 Marky Mark Wahlberg Annihilator gets 390 AU sector speed. Now to put that in perspective, a regular battleship, I um, think, I can't remember which one of those it is, so let's go not to mark it. Uh, 390 AU, we'll go to holes and we'll look at this bad boy. So 240, so it is that last one. So that's 150 AU sector speed faster. Now, the carrier that currently goes with it is the Dominion carrier for the most part. Uh, and most of these ships have 240 AU sector speed. Cutters have the second highest, frigates have the highest. Frigates at 330, cutters at 300, and then you get into your uh, Xeno ships, which with the care, the battleship, 390, the cutter has 390 plus 25%, which comes out to, I want to say, somewhere around 480, right? 472, 470 to 480, somewhere in there. Uh, so that's a lot. That's obviously the fastest in game. Uh, it used to be pythons before uh, the last great rebalance, and they evened everything out. Pythons had 410, which was even faster than most of the stuff that we still currently have. That's what made the pythons fun. Um, Oh wait, I guess that's only 390 total. Uh, so yeah, and then you have Punishers uh, at 360. So, you know, there it is. The, the point that I'm getting at is if you want to utilize this on the battleship, you need, in order to utilize this, you're gonna need the Mark VI carrier that also has above 300, I'm just speculating, is probably gonna have above 300 AU uh, sector speed. So um, that's going to put, put us kind of in a predicament, or at least me in my head. I wanted to have an agility support field because I want to be able to use this, but I know that it's not going to have an agility support field, just I, unless they give it two specials. I think it's going to have jamming. I think it's going to jam, but I doubt it's going to have two specials. Uh, I would love to see an agility support field just so we can utilize this and still fly battleships the way that we have been, but I think we're going to have to change it up a little bit and make our battleships a little more brawly. Um, another thing to support that was they made the turning speed a little bit faster on this than it is on its its 10 degrees base uh, versus the, especially if you're using a Hellfire, which is 8 degrees base, and if you use Armored Thrusters, you get uh, 7, I think it's, it's one number less than Fusion Thrusters does, but you're slightly faster, so you get 10 meters more per second but one degree less per second versus fusion thrusters three uh and i can just go ahead and highlight that but the point that i'm getting at is i think that they did that because they knew that they were not going to have an agility support field um on the on the carrier so it, it would kind of corroborate so here you go it's 80 and 8 for fusion three uh, here you have 90 and 7. So slow returning by 3. Uh, or, yeah, I guess 3. Um, but 10 meters per second faster. Um, which is interesting, especially when you pair 
Hellfires with a rag and a good pilot versus Nova Annihilators. It's an interesting matchup. Um, but yeah. So yeah, this is just kind of a rant video. Wanted to talk about some of the new things that are going on in Vega and kind of where I see some of the future going. Um, let me know what you guys think in the bottom. I may, if you guys like this video, let me know. I may do some more rants in the future uh, just to kind of talk about some of the things that I know about Vega Conflict um, that I don't share very often with many people. Uh, but if you guys like it, you know, I'll just get on and rant and talk about Vega for a little bit. Um, sorry I couldn't hit any fleets for this one, but they literally re-ended just before I started making the video. I just, I had to talk about some of these points. Um, and like I said, I did go out and test the harvesters. They are harder. Uh, or at least the, the Reaper and Barrage harvesters are harder. Um, and they stated that they would be in the forums, and I can confirm that they are. I took 20% damage versus the 12 that I took last night. Uh, so, I added some coin in their wallet there. Good job, Kixai. Um, other than that, I hope you guys continue to have a good event. I hope you finish the event at the level that you wanted. If you like this video and have anything to comment or continue the conversation uh, to what I was kind of ranting about in some particular area or aspect, feel free to comment below. Uh, like if you like it. Let me know if I get enough people who like it. I may make more of these. Uh, who knows? I know somebody's probably gonna out there who's going to tell me to replace the battery in my smoke detector and get a better mic. No! Especially the way the game is right now. I'm not putting any more money into this than I already do. Sorry. Um, if that's the deal breaker, I am really sorry, but I hope it's not. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a good one.